Should we get started? OK, I'm getting the thumbs up. So first of all, thank you guys for taking some time. My name is Don Barnetson. Uh, I'm responsible for our cable products at Credo. We're here today to talk about AI. You know, what else would we be talking about in Silicon Valley these days? But in particular, generative AI and the outsized role of CERTES. So I'll talk to you a little bit about how, just how important CERTES are and what we can do as an industry to make that more sustainable, more scalable, and ultimately more cost efficient for our customers. Before I do that, I have a brief note from our legal department. Make sure you read every single word. So let me get into the interesting stuff. So I'm probably not telling you anything you don't know. AI model sizes have gotten really, really, really big over the last uh, five years. Um, what's really interesting about these models is they don't fit on one piece of silicon, they don't fit in one server, they don't fit in one rack, they don't even fit in one row anymore. They require an entire data center to train. And so if we look at GPT-3, which is probably the model that we're most familiar with, that we've had the most work on, it was reported to have trained on 10,000 NVIDIA V100s, which is about a 4.6 megawatt cluster. And so that work wasn't actually done all that long ago. But if you talk to the Microsoft team, you know, Zayed, as recently as April, was saying that we're now training on a 75 megawatt cluster. So we're training across 15 times as much space. 75 megawatts is several data center buildings. And so when we're training a model, in the end, we want a single output from that model. And so we're training that. We need to have all of these disparate GPUs and other resources coordinate with each other at extremely high speed over a network. And the network that we use that for is not the network that we had in days gone by. So we were fortunate to work with the folks at Intel. Actually, this is pre-COVID to build out their Gaudi pod. Um, this is Intel's Gaudi data center in Oregon. Um, it has about one petabit of a dedicated Ethernet RDMA backend network running on small buffer switches for those geeks uh, in the audience using about 2,500 of our 400 gig cables. This is something that we built out in 2020 before AI got really, really hot and sexy. The stuff that we're building now, I can't yet show you. But the scale of this network um, that's needed to support these clusters is about five to 20 times as large as the network that we historically used uh, for interconnect in a general computing environment. The scale out backend RDMA network is really, really important and is really important that the industry gets this right. And so when we look at this network, there's a few different options here. So there's a lot of discussion around InfiniBand. So InfiniBand works really well as this network. Importantly, it works today. It exists today from NVIDIA, um, and it, it does the job. The challenge with InfiniBand, though, is it's a single vendor uh, network. And so with that comes some management challenges and some cost challenges. Um, and it isn't really interoperable with Ethernet. And so for our customers, they have to learn to operate and manage a brand new network, which our, our tier one hyperscale customers would very much prefer not to do. They spend a long time learning how to run an Ethernet network. They would like to stay in that if they can. So many of our customers, in particular the ones with large engineering departments, are looking towards small buffer switches, what uh, Broadcom would call a Tomahawk class switch for their backend RDMA network. So those switches are great. They're extremely low cost. It's an open standard, and so you can multi-source that hardware across multiple um, uh, switch vendors and multiple silicon vendors. The challenge is making that lossless is a non-trivial thing to do. They weren't designed to be lossless networks, and they were built, and it requires a lot of tuning. And if you're up for a webinar, Jag Brar at Oracle actually has a tremendous webinar talking about how Oracle made small buffer switches work in this lossless Ethernet RDMA environment. I suspect many of the other hyperscalers are doing something simple, perhaps without the webinar. So would certainly encourage you to check out JAG's uh, webinar. Um, another option is to use a, a cell-based or a scheduled Ethernet structure. The benefit of that is it's guaranteed to be lossless. The downside of that is you're going to take some amount of latency hit, but maybe more challenging, you're going to take a vendor lock-in. Well, the front end of that network is Ethernet when you connect your, your appliance to that. The back end of that that allows you to connect your row scale together is not. It's a proprietary network. And so Broadcom obviously has one with their Jericho structures. Cisco has something that's functionally equivalent with their scheduled Ethernet. Either way, it's a proprietary system. But it's a solution that allows you to use Ethernet without having to go through this tuning and training structure, which many of our customers, in particular the smaller ones, just don't have the engineering bench to go through. But I think what's really interesting is to talk about CXL. 
And so CXL is a new and up-and-coming standard. It promises the lossless RDMA that we need. It promises it at almost an order of magnitude lower latency than the, than the, uh, the big buffer switches are able to deliver today, and an open standard. So we can all work together to make this happen. The ecosystem is still coming together. It's still early days in this. But if you go to our Experience Center booth, we'll show you some of our vision for it. And I do believe two, three years from now, this is something that will be very viable for backend network up to row scale. So if you look at this chart on the right-hand side, this is something that uh, Alan at the 650 Group put together. So everyone talks about InfiniBand, but actually Ethernet is quietly growing much, much more quickly than InfiniBand for backend network. And this is on a revenue basis. So if you think an InfiniBand port might sell at two to four times as much as Ethernet, you can see even in 2023, we're already getting to port crossover. We get to revenue crossover in 24, and the future is very much a future of Ethernet in this space, driven by the management challenges that our customers want. So let's get back to CERTES again. So if you look at a CERTES, if you look at a backend network, we talked about that GPT-3 training cluster. So there were 10,000 B100s that were trained in that. That's 25, or that's 1,200 DGX-1 appliances. But if you look at what's in one of those DGX-1 appliances, there's a whole lot of CERTES. So there's 192 NB-Link CERTES. There's 512, in that case, PCI-3 CERTES. There's four 200 gig Ether InfiniBand NICs. And so inside of that, when you multiply that out, 440 kilowatts of power is consumed by CERTES that are basically inside of the training box. But then we're not stitching together a small number of these. We're stitching together 1,200 of these boxes with a giant InfiniBand network. And so there we've got a bunch of 6.4T switches, lots of AOCs, 768 of them, 1,500 transceivers. Put it all together, and you're seeing 1.1 megawatts of the power in that training cluster with CERTES power. 25% of the power in that system was CERTES power. That's like, for, for me, that's an incredible metric. You know, networking used to be a 5 or 10% thing in a data center. Now we're talking about it being a 25% thing in a data center. And at 25%, we really need to think about how we as an industry can do better. We really, really need to do better. The challenge with Ethernet, uh, as well as with InfiniBand, as you'll see in a couple slides, is they're always on networks. You can't throttle power with bandwidth. You just have to leave them blasting away, sending idle frames back and forth, even if they're not doing something useful. So the first thing to do here is to get to a better CERTES. So many companies make universal what we would describe as a sledgehammer CERTES. It does everything. It'll go from one gigabit to 100 gigabit. It'll do PCI Express. It'll do Ethernet. That's really awesome. But as you guys are probably familiar with, there's no free lunch here. And so the issue with the sledgehammer CERTES built on standard cells is it really does nothing well. And so we're to the point where we can do better as an industry. We can build an application-specific CERTES that can do the same thing for one application at about half the power. And Credo has that across our portfolio today. We think the future is not going to be a sledgehammer CERTES future because we can't afford to waste power like this as we have. But as we look into this, this always-on network becomes really important. And so for an Ethernet network, if I turn it off and then I want to reset it, it's going to take maybe 30 seconds for it to converge at layer one just to do a basic link up. But that's really just the starting point. For a network to converge up to layer three can take minutes or sometimes hours. And so what that means is that Ethernet or InfiniBand network always has to be on. And if you look at Ethernet utilization inside of a hyperscale data center, it's not very high. It's often in that 5 or 10% range on average. So maybe 80 or 90% of the time, you're sending idle frames back and forth, just completely wasting energy in order to have this hot standby resource. So one thing that's really interesting about CXL, really thoughtful PCI Express, which it's built on, is we have power states. And so we have power states that can be turned on and off at a uh, latency that is actually usable. So if you have a 16-lane channel, you can dial it back to 15 lanes or 13 lanes almost immediately if you just need to trim it a bit. If you want the whole thing to go to sleep, you can take it down to 15% of its power and bring it back within you know, tens of microseconds. So really, really important to this, especially if we're going to be running these giant networks, is how do we stop them from wasting power when they're not doing important work for us? The combination of a purpose-built specific CERTES and a, something, a better technology like CXL, we think is going to be important to do that. So what can Credo do? So at the show today, we announced the CXL Highwire Consortium. Some of you might be familiar with the Highwire Consortium of years gone by. Uh, we standardize the active electrical cables that, are, that enable many of our partners' uh, hyperscale Ethernet connections today. They are absolutely standardized in the industry, and we contributed that back to OCP two years ago. 
Our plan is to do something very similar in this space with CXL. We believe a future of CXL cabling, active electrical cables as well as optical cables, is going to be absolutely critical to extend that CXL network out to the rack scale and out to the row scale in order to enable this future that I've talked about. We're very proud to join with these partners to enable that. There's more information at, high, at highwire.org or you can feel free to come to me. Another cool thing that we've enabled and that I'd encourage you to come to our booth to look at is something that we call the pluggable patch panel or the P3. So something that our customers have noticed is, these are be our service provider customers, is they very much want to piggyback on the 400 gig core infrastructure that the hyperscalers are driving, but they really want to do it with 100 gig optics. Or maybe they want to use 400 gig ZR plus coherent optics, but they want to use a really inexpensive switch that isn't designed to do either of those. So if you plug a 100 gig uh, optic into that, you're throwing away three quarters of the port radix. If you plug a 400 gig coherent optic into it, maybe it doesn't have the power and cooling to drive more than a quarter of its ports at those. You have to leave a bunch of ports empty. And so what we built here is something akin to a patch panel, but a patch panel for pluggables. So what you can do is you can take your switch, you can use one of our active electrical cables to basically remote your optics off the faceplate, and then you can plug in whatever you want. And we're not gonna hassle you with software compatibility, we're gonna give you open access to whatever you want. Um, we're going to be able to support all the breakout cases because our active electrical cables already do. So we can go from 400 gig to 100 gig or 800 gig to 100 gig, whatever you need. And then you can plug in your coherent optics, you can plug in your 100 gig optics, you can even plug in your EDFA amplifiers into the lowest cost, lowest power solution in the industry to host them. I encourage you to come to our booth to have a look at that. So quickly some conclusions before my time runs out. AI and ML is transformative. It's going to change everything that we do. But that back-end scale-out network is really the opportunity that the industry is focused on. It's up to 20 times as dense as a traditional front-end network, and it leverages 30s like never before, 25% of the power in that NVIDIA cluster. That's insane for me. So to support sustainability, we need to do better. If we go to purpose-built 30s, we can drop the power by half. We've already proven that. If we go to technologies like CXL where we have power modes, we can maybe drop it another half or perhaps even beyond. So we very much encourage you to, to come with us, build this technology that allows us the more sustainable, more growth-oriented future in support of our very important customers. Thank you guys so much.